Okay, guys, uh, remember to turn off your phones, same format. Tim, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I don't know where to start. I got a lot of conflicting thoughts right now, just in terms of um, how we feel. But um, I, I think it starts again on the mound. If we want to talk about the game, it, it, it certainly starts on the mound with Mason. He, he's created such harmony during the course of the year with how he's pitched the weekday and, and certainly down the stretch here. He's pitched, pitched some very difficult games himself and certainly gave us a, a great start tonight. And then, um, you know, Pat certainly got us going a little bit offensively with a home run. And then we were, we were pretty clutch with two outs today um, in, in getting those runs. And I, I felt like we were going to hit well. I felt like we were going to play well. I, I thought this was going to be a nice night for the kids. It was difficult because we played such a good Michigan team. I thought they had elite pitching. And I thought they played so so well to get through UCLA and to get into this thing and make it difficult on everyone. Um, you know, in, in some ways, playing against Eric is, is a, there's a conflict of thoughts that way as well. But uh, he certainly did a great job with his team. And uh, I'm just happy for our, our team. I'm happy for the boys. It's, it's fun to watch this thing come full circle for them. Okay, we'll start with uh, questions for the student athletes, and we'll start with Adam here in the middle. Adam Sparks of Tennessee, and for Pat, um, I know it, that's not a walk-off homer, but that's a home run in the college national championship. How do you fast forward 10, 20 years? How do you think that memory is going to be for you hitting that home run? Uh, yeah, I don't think it, it's really sunk in yet. I don't think it's sunk in yet for any of us, this whole experience. But, you know, uh, I was just trying to stay in the moment and, you know, Hopefully it'll sink in, in in a couple of years, but right now, you know, it just feels like any other. Okay. Simon Gibbs, Vanderbilt Hustler. This is for Mason and Ethan. In the first inning, after the first few base hits, Ethan, you went over to the mound, spoke to Mason, and it seemed like a completely different ball game from there on out. What was that interaction like? Ethan, what did you say to Mason? Mason, how'd that calm you down? first inning it wasn't like there was anything to really worry about and we all trust Mason he's going to give us a good outing um I think I just wanted to remind him that you know it's a big park I wanted to work down in the zone and let us let our defense work you know um we trust we trust each other in the in the infield so we want to make some plays for him yeah he was just uh trying to get a little confidence going with me uh just give me a breather he said just keep the ball down let's get a ground ball let's turn to and we'll be out of this thing soon so it was just a little break for me and a little reassurance. Okay, next question. Adam again. Ethan, uh, I talked to Teddy and Susan, and they weren't going to ask to go up there, but it, I could tell they really, really appreciated you guys bringing them up there. What, why did you think that was important? Uh, for so many reasons. Um, you know, that's those two – means so much to this program and and all the players and the seniors and um, I mean to this day every time I look at Teddy I think of Donnie and um, just <clears throat> being able to share that moment with them was something that you know I think I can speak for the seniors but probably the whole team is something that we've all really wanted to do um, you know this team is so special for so many reasons but um, we're all we're all genuinely all care about each other and you know they're just as much as just as much a part of the team as, as we all are. Uh, yep. Okay, Teddy. Teddy Cahill, Baseball America. Ethan, you and a few other guys made the decision to come back for your senior year. Just what does it mean now that, that you accomplished the, the final goal that you guys had set out? I mean, it, it definitely makes it, um, you know, definitely makes the decision a lot easier. I think uh, at the end of the day, our, no our number one reason to come back to school, you know, wasn't to, you know, have this outlandish season or anything like that. I think that we all wanted to just be a part of something special. It w I mean, it's great to win a national championship. It's great to do all those things. But um, the program means so much more to us than just winning. I think that um, there's such a bond with each other, and we do all those things off the field, and we celebrate each other so well. So I'm happy that we were able to have this moment, and it's going to be a memory for the forever. But um, you know, just being able to share this team and this experience with these guys, we're going to have friends for life. Okay. Back here. Phil Stanton with College Baseball Insider. Ethan, did you guys feel pressure through the postseason being the number two seed? I wouldn't say so. Uh, we've we've never really 
um, you know, credit to the maturity and the experience on this team. We've never really looked too much into the, the rankings or opinions or, or media and stuff like that. You know, it's great to be thought highly of, but, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why this team's so successful is we were able to just stay within each other and, you know, keep the, keep the communication within each other and, you know, have a, have a similar vision. So I think that led us to having some success along the postseason. Adam? Jason, uh, you were midweek this year, obviously your weekend last year. Um, at some point in the season, did you think this would be possible, that you would be on the mound for, for a national title, this, this type of moment for you to be in? Absolutely. I mean, I thought we had the chance the whole season to end up in this situation. I had no idea what exactly my role would be. For me, it was just trying to put our team in any position to win that I possibly can. And I, a lot of the credit is because of the defense we had behind us, because of the offense that was produced tonight, and that really allowed us to get to this moment. Okay, any more questions for the student athletes? Yeah, Aaron. Aaron Fit, uh, D1 Baseball. Pat, the way this offense kind of coalesced here over the last couple of games, um, what do you attribute that to? It seemed like you guys were very patient. You know, the walks seemed like a, a major factor here. Was that a point of emphasis for you guys heading into the last two games? Yeah, I mean, you know, we were, it was kind of a slow start to the tournament, and, but we were playing good offense. It was just we weren't getting that big hit. And, and tonight, you know, most of the damage was done with two outs. And, we, we were just getting that big hit, and, and you know, we were stringing good offense together as a team. It was team offense tonight, yeah. Okay, any more questions for the student athletes? Guys, keep celebrating. Thank you. Thank you. Nice shirts. Okay, let's open it up for questions for Tim. And uh, Adam's got his hand up. Tim, I've asked you about 100 different decisions throughout the year of who starts at second and short, how you're going to move guys around, who's going to be the weekend starter and all that. Do you see it as each of those incremental steps lead to something like this? Do you, do you look back at those each decisions and think it could have gone one way or the other if you didn't make the right decision? I guess you could think about it that way, but you, you drive yourself crazy. I think the decisions that we always wanted to, to make as a staff is just try to create consistency among the group. And the closer we could get to roles quicker, uh, the better we, we felt we would be. Um, once we created those roles, then we just asked the guys to serve them and stay in them and and uh, do whatever they could to, to move the team along, and they, they, they did that. Left. Zach Ellis, Vanderbilt Athletics. Uh, Tim, you've said before that seniors are often your favorite class this year, having a bigger senior class than you usually do. For a number of reasons, what does this mean for you to see this happen for them? You don't always get what you want in, in, in life, and to watch this situation come full circle for them is, is particularly gratifying. Um, they they experienced devastation at the at the lowest level as an 18 year old um, watching a, a friend lose a friend um, and, and and suffer through that heartbreak for a long period of time that they played with heavy hearts for a long period of time and the program program didn't didn't feel right for a time um, rightly so but the fact that they could navigate their way towards their senior year graduate, stay together, make decisions to come back, and then, uh, as Ethan said, I, I think his point was straight on. We, we just, we kind of stayed in our lane the entire year and just tried to do small things well. And a, as time went on, we never talked about championships. We didn't talk about winning the FCC. We didn't talk about, you know, winning a regional. We just stayed and in, in, in very localized in their thinking. And I attribute that to the older kids. The, the, that situation calloused their brain. And because it did that, it allowed them to get closer to maturity than maybe if that didn't happen. Um, I hate to say there's any positive thing from losing a young person, but certainly there's experiences that you gain from that that allow you to grow individually and as a group. And, and we did that. 
We're back. Simon Gibbs, Vanderbilt Hustler. <clears throat> coach, just a few minutes ago in this room, Eric Backage said you are the best coach in America in any sport. Can you speak a little bit about your relationship with Eric and how it played out throughout the course of this series? W listen, it, w it's always difficult to play someone that you really care about, um, but we're very real with one another. Our wives are very real with one another. Um, we got to share this moment together as friends and as families, and our two teams just played. Once Once our two teams were on the field, then we kind of let it go. We knew that once it was over, that we both could live with one another. Uh, we, we don't have egos. Neither one of us do. Um, he's a special guy. And, I, it's, you know, I say that besides the sport. I mean, I've always said Vanderbilt's not Vanderbilt if Eric Backage isn't there. He, 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 he created a lot of this fo these foundations that Vanderbilt has allowed people to come and have what we had today. And uh, I just... In a lot of way, uh, in a big way, I wish he was part of something like this with the same uniform. I, w I would have loved to celebrate with him because he's a very deserving guy. But in saying that, he will enjoy this at some point. He will have that opportunity. Okay, Aaron. Aaron Fitt, uh, D1 baseball coach. When you look at the kind of the development of this pitching staff over the course of the season, I mean, everyone knows how many huge arms you have, but to see them come here um, and command the zone the way they did in particular, you know, on this stage, it seemed like that's something that, that got better over the course of the season. Uh, is that an accurate read, first of all, and, and how important do you think it, that was to getting this team where it is right now? It's very accurate, and, and you and Kendall and Teddy have seen a lot of baseball, and you've watched staffs grow throughout the year, and I think that was at the end of it that you have to, I know our offense was celebrated for a long period of time, but you look at what happened in this tournament and it was pitching and defense and certainly starting pitching. We won this in 2014, it was relief pitching. In this tournament, it was starting pitching. And I think, it, it, forget the fact that Drake started on a Friday or Raby started on a Sunday or Kumar started on a Saturday. It, Saturday. it was a strong collection of individuals and they pitch deep into ball games. And when you can pitch deep into ball games in Omaha, you give yourself a chance. Had we not done that, I, I, we weren't good enough offensively really to get through this tournament. So yes, you, that's a very accurate read on our staff. It grew as the year progressed. Teddy? Kumar got named most outstanding player. I know we talked about a lot about him last night, but just what does that mean as a freshman to, to have that guy come out and, and pitch the way he did on this stage? It, it's almost unfair to look at him. I, I, he's a freshman, but I, no one looks at him that way. And I think he kind of gained that feel early March and April. I, and I think it was his presence. I think it was his attention to detail. Um, he's, he's got a teachable spirit. And he, he's one of those kids that is curious He'll listen. He'll ask good questions. He won't yeah, yeah you to death. He's not that kid. There's, a, there's an honesty about him that's very refreshing, and he's tough. And he's got a fiber of competition that's different. He loves the arena of competition. And when you see guys like that, they separate themselves. And handing him the ball, it, I, I didn't feel at any time that that was above him. I felt like that was for him. That's something he wanted. That's something that he could do. He pitches for Vanderbilt. He, he just, he loves to pitch for his team. And it's pure, and it's raw, and it's not manufactured. OK, any more questions for Tim? Congratulations once again. Yep. Thank you, Bill. See you next year. Thank you all. Really appreciate it. Thank you.